false negative as well. False negatives can be, can be dangerous as well. We say, well, actually, there's no evidence to believe that it works for subgroup one. Let's not use it. Well, that's a false negative. So they've got to be adequately powered to pick up the signal if the signal is there. They may generate hypotheses. So what we don't want to do is to say to people, unless you wrote it down before you rented your first patient to your study, you're not allowed to do that analysis. That would stifle hypothesis generation. So we don't want to do that either. We've got, but we have to recognize the difference between them. We have to recognize that a pre-specified subgroup analysis with a strong rationale from independent evidence should be more believable than a post-hoc subgroup analysis where we fiddled around inside our data, we found something that looks interesting, we've gone to the database, PubMed or somewhere like that, we've now got an article to support it, we now appear to have a rationale. Because if I turned it around, you could go to the database and you could find a rationale in the opposite direction. The differences between subgroups should be examined with an interaction test, so a little bit of mathematics there. They should not, uh, we should not use um, the individual p value. I shouldn't say, well, in this subgroup it's, it's non-significant. What we should be saying is, is there any reason to believe that this subgroup is different to that one for anything other than chance? We also, and this is even more important almost, recognize that when we do subgroup analyses, we might have divided the data on the back basis of the wrong thing. We might say it works very well in the elderly but not in younger people. That may be totally wrong. It may be the setting. Maybe it works in people who are in some uh, care home institution and not people in uh, the community. Maybe that's what's going on and it just so happens that the care home in the population in the trial, those are elderly, the community are younger We've ended up concluding that don't try it for young people. And maybe what we should be thinking about is don't use it in the community. We can do subgroup analyses that are on the wrong factor. And we can decide to not treat people because they have a characteristic which is not the characteristic of importance. So we have to be sceptical as well. We have to be careful and we have to be sceptical. So we're going to finish by trying to pick another card. Uh, because I'm, I'm pleased enough with my uh, ability to um, hypnotize at least one person uh, in the audience. So what I'm going to try and do now is to try and help you. I want power from the audience now to help influence the selection of a card. Because we're going to move now from, from the, the little bit of help I had from under here to a little bit of help with my computer. I need someone again on the front row who's willing to, to pick a card out of this deck. I'm just going to riffle the deck and I want someone just to put their finger in and take out a card. Volunteer from the front. Okay. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to do that and I want you just to you know, sort of say stop or stick your finger in somewhere. You can, okay. Take, take the card you've picked. I, d I really do not want to see this one because I could influence it. Okay. So I want you to have a look at that card. Because I'm very interested in the power of, my, power of thought, have a look at it. Show it to the clump in the corner there so, so, so those people can see it. Not everybody else because we're going to see how powerful this clump of people are compared to everybody else. If, how many have seen the card now? You see, so we've got a lot of people. Okay, and enough people. You know, good, maybe a fifth or a sixth of the audience. So I, what I want now is everybody to think of a card, but the clump who've seen that one have to think of that one, okay? <laughs> so everybody's going to think of a card because we're going to try and influence something now. So everybody, you, know, you, you all remember what the card is. Can I have the card back? So I'm going to look at the card now. Well, we could, um, well, we could finish. We could stop there. Or we could just see if we can, let's just see what can happen, let's just see what's going to happen. Okay, I was playing solitaire earlier, so let's just see if we can save this. I'm not going to, I'm going to, well I am using this thing, but um, I could say this is not in any way connected to the computer, but of course it's connected to the computer, otherwise it wouldn't be making the computer turn. We've got to try and think, everybody think of your card now, everybody think really hard. Okay, the clump of people, my people with is that your card? Is that your card? No? It is? Oh, there you go. Hey! Is that your card? No? Is this working? Is this your card? Is that your card? 
How did that work? Well, your card's gone now, or has it? Could you just have a little look in that envelope for me, please? <laughs> have a good rummage around. You can, you can you know, pick anything you want out of it. Is that your card? <laughs> so, be sceptical. Beware of magicians, real magicians, can manipulate your data, you can manipulate your data. The whole point of the talk is to make you careful, sceptical, because if we get our data wrong, if we get our analysis wrong, we can be so convincing, and if we're convincing enough, and if people think we've done a good enough study, they're going to act on it, and they might be making mistakes, and those of us who are researchers do not want people to make mistakes. Thank you very much. Thank you.